The last two years of the administration of distinguished Senator Hope Ozadema in Imo State have been as eventful as they were challenging. To many, that the Imo State Governor has met remarkable and landmark achievements in two years may not be news. What is news, however, is that not even the combined cases of COVID-19 pandemic that literally forced governments to down tools or the hydra-headed security challenge in the country near the state could prevent the Amuma-born distinguished senator from recording giant strides never seen in such a time in the history of the state. Me, the greatest achievement of this government is that he had, it has been able to contain the threats to security in the state, which is politically contrived. Has, the government has been able to shame uh, the opposition elements who have been contriving insecurity in the state. And in spite of all efforts they have made to make the state ungovernable, this government has been able to withstand it, has been able to bring the security situation under very, very serious control. In this documentary, however, the Ministry of Local Government and Chieftaincy Affairs, headed by the Honorable Commissioner, Mrs. Ruby Emele, brings you some of the many achievements of Governor Ozadema in the last two years. A major and remarkable stride recorded by Governor Ozadimba was that he is the first to take over the mantle of office without a single handover note or any cobble in the treasury. This was enough to weigh any administrator down, but certainly not Governor Ozadimba who came prepared to rescue Imo from the years of agony. Hence, he hit the ground running. He hit the ground running when he started. And then he came in in a hurry too to place this state on the path of progress, on the path of sustainable development and pursuing economic self-reliance. One achievement of Governor Ozadema, which Imo people and indeed other Nigerians can never cease to mention, is the relentless fight his administration gave the invincible yet powerful enemy by way of a virus that threatened the lives of our people. COVID-19 his administration's prompt response in setting up a star student committee of health science experts headed by internationally renowned Professor Morris Iwo as chairman has remained a reference point to many governments, corporate bodies and individuals. This is evident upon sustained effort of government to ensure that Imo people are safe while the proactive steps have ensured the records of infections and death in the state have remained 
minimal. At the local government level, the COVID-19 committee was replicated and all safety protocols duly adhered to. And then it was important to take the message of how our people will, you know, protect themselves from contracting this dreaded disease, you know. And that message was passed down to the grassroots through the local governments. And then the palliatives provided by the government, you know, were also taken down to the local governments. And then the councils ensured that these palliatives went down as instructed. They were instructed to ensure that these palliatives got to the people at the very, very local places. Upon assumption of office on 15th January 2020, most of the local government councils were in a state of disrepair. Hence the resolve of the new state administration to give the councils a first lift through the chairman and members of the interim management committees. The council, especially my office, was seriously vandalized. Seriously vandalized. If you look at my office now, you can see how beautiful it is. I, I, I changed the doors, they were broken, all of the doors here yeah, you are looking at were all broken. I, I changed them. If you look at the wall, you can see how I have screeded it, you know, beautified it. The roof was leaking, I walked on the roof. Uh, also, reconstructed uh, some parts of, the, of my secretariat. The education block was totally uh, finished. I renovated the council. I put, there was no water, there was no light when I came into this council. I brought in the EEDC into the council. They electrified here. On health, the Ozadema administration provided 10 mobile clinics which traversed the nooks and crannies of the communities for health needs of the people at no cost. Mobile clinics, they were like, you know, the normal clinics you had. Everything, sick bay, you know, laboratory, medications, injections, everything was inside, you know, and that shows somebody that really cared, cared and cares for his people. These 10 mobile clinics have world-class equipment. These 10 mobile clinics have personnel, medical personnel in them. And these 10 mobile clinics have been functioning. The government has also embarked on the renovation and equipping of 305 health centers across the state. His Excellency has undertaken to renovate 305 political world health centers. And you know it means a whole lot to our people. What it means is that it is taking you to the Alma Mater Declaration, Geneva Alma Mater Declaration, which says that the health center should be just 30 minutes walk from you. That's what His Excellency has taken back to his people. It's beginning with one primary health care in each of the 305 wards in Nemo State. And then it's not just about you. Uh, repairing them and uh, putting them in shape. They are also to be equipped, well equipped, such that they are able to take care of a whole lot of healthcare needs of the people. So except maybe major cases that they will encounter 
and then perhaps refer to specialist hospitals that are outside. Not unmindful of the place of local government administration to the people, the Prosperity Administration has continued to address the specific needs of the LGS through the Interim Management Committee Chairman, all of whom are handling different projects according to the needs of the communities. The councils have been providing basic amenities for the people. Some providing water, some providing electricity, some, you know, providing um, these open uh, market, open stalls, market stalls for the interior to make it easier for local women to bring out their produce and find decent places, you know, to sell them. All these things they are providing according to the needs of their people. Some projects are going on in the local governments because the local government chairman were given some cash to do so, so, some projects in the areas, free, free hand, free will. Government did not direct them do this, but they were given the money to sample and get a particular project that will benefit the local government. Because the, the project that benefits uh, local government uh, <coughs> will not benefit project, uh, local government B. So they were asked, whatever you think that is very important in your local government, do it. Another area where the Ozadema administration scored high was the restoration of the self-esteem of civil servants at the engine room of government through several trainings and retrainings. The governor ensured that the working environment in the secretariat was more humane by re-roofing all the blocks that were leaking and repented them as well. This was also done by his instruction in all the 27 local government councils leading to increased productivity. Um, after painting, renovation, and every other thing, in a way or not, I graded roads to the governor 
I built 14 lock-up shops at Olapo. I also um, constructed borehole at Emekuku 1. In, in my council here, I had pigri, pigri farm, in respect of um, agri. I have pigri farm, I have fish pond. I also have um, a plantain and um, banana plantation. Tagmachi, Ikelonishi, Alani, Nimu State, Governor Hope, Ozo Demma. And a Mekele and he no mana, a way he could marry Harry, he hold it. He hold it when he end. So Ekele, let me and he no near, I can make I wouldn't deny one on a Ulora and a car in on Kate. Mekwenaya and a papa tie again and do worry no taka, Ijihuna Niha, Niha da ho corn, Niha Barataro, price ya reduced. So I call I now call Yai Koronga wo cassava, Yana plantain and banana. I call Coriano. Oh, Corendi Kai Korako to rule and Ila Niga who have a betting when military Ila. I see Kai me intercropping, ha bo. So at Sky Week, I have a chunk and walk over a harvest anchor. He boosted the morale of the workforce by providing official cares for permanent secretaries and free bus services for the rank and file. Uh, state civil service, when we got to government, their morale was at the lowest ebb. They were, uh, their salaries were paid whimsically. There was no scientific determination of how much you earned, and anybody could just, uh, you know, when you are working up the next month, you don't know how much you are going to earn for that month. And the, the, even the work, there was no motivation. The environment was, was not alluring. And even uh, some, uh, the, at the point, the civil servants were told to work for only three days of the, of the week. And those who came uh, <laughs> those days were asked not to work. We were driven away as if they were. Um, um, intruders into the place. Now, the morale of the civil service has been returned. The, the government has been able to uh, retrain them, train and retrain them, and brought back a sense of, of commitment to duty through ensuring that the normal uh, professional lines of discipline in the service has been restored. Permanent secretaries are now in charge of their ministries as chief accounting officers. They have cars now, which they never had before. Even workers have cars. So the, that, that's the civil service as the engine room of government, that has been restored. And is a major, major achievement. And apart from that, salaries are paid as and when due. Actually, when the governor was, named, was declared the winner of the election, he promised workers of Imo State that God has done his part, that he will do his own part. And uh, since he assumed office as the governor, he has been, he, he puts workers' priority first. Workers' priority is his first agenda. Road infrastructure remains central to the achievements of Senator Hope Ozadema within the years under review. Before the inception of his administration on 15th January 2020, Imo State was seen as one of the states of the Federation with the worst road networks. Some, some people said the rain used to, there was buildings here now, the rain used to chase people out from the estate because I'm living in this federal housing. Oh, uh -huh. yes. So even rain used to flow inside people's house because of this bad road. It, it was a, a, a very bad spot. We don't used to cross here. During the rainy season, you can't pass even here. People go through the estates and come out of Nepal office before they go. Then people that are heading to uh, Chukumawaha, we don't even have a connecting road from the Tiger to Chukumawaha. Thereby, 
going through Chikumamoha down to Ebu Road. If it's rainy season, you can't pass through that side. We normally cut it off during the rainy season and follow MCC. We we'll divided the estate into two. Those on this other shop right side will be going by Ebu Road. We will be going by MCC. However, under two years of Governor Ozadime's leadership, the story has changed for good. There was a construction of a drainage system and canals that makes the water flow. And it was channeled to somewhere I don't really know, but this road was very bad before actually. It was very bad and uh, people usually stop at this spot or they will take another street. This particular place was very bad, but um, as you can see, it's fine now. It was abandoned. That's what I'm saying. For you, it was abandoned. It has been happening here. Yeah. A man, that was last two years, fraud enter a state that the man in the house was even dying. People were running helter skelter to go and carry the man at the back. Young boys of the estate came out, jumped into the mansa, carried the man at the back and came out. And the children called, start calling the children, the old man, the, the old man, they carried them at their back and swim out to come out. You can even kill any type of rat inside the inside the water that is playing, even big snake. You can even catch fish. We used to catch catch fish inside the canal that is at the back of St. Paul's. But now the people around here can accept it they are living home. I just came back from Portugal right now. I've been in Holland for years. I was about to sell this property. I can't sell it right now because of the access road. I've just come to access. You know what I'm saying? You look at the road, what the road revolution that has taken place in Imo State. That's a major achievement. You and I were here two years ago and we knew the state of roads in Owere, for instance. Today we have uh, uh, most of the Owere roads, you know, have been fixed and work is still ongoing. We have, uh, the, uh, I mentioned specific ones that are very, very significant. The Relief Market Road, you know, that road was, <laughs> was abandoned for over 15 years and it's the, the road that leads to the major market in, in Owere. And, uh, and so, of course, it affected business, uh, residents there, some of them had to pack away from there. But that road has been fixed today. So, on the other way, the other way around, it has affected business positively. People can now go to that map. A lot of people don't believe that that road uh, could be fixed because it was like something that had been completely abandoned. And there is a link road that, uh, from that relief market road that comes to uh, MCC. It's, it has also been fixed. Then Uchukumamoha Road is another significant road, and Lake Mwebere. This, this, this Lake Mwebere, these areas, you know, people didn't believe that they were still roads. In fact, I remember when His Excellency took over, uh, even before he app appointed those commissioners, when I was going with him, we were trying to, I didn't even know that that was the, the, the area we went. What, we got to a place, you know, it was a thick bush. And we stopped, and he was walking. I was wondering where he was going, but I saw the pond. That's that Lake Mwebere area. Honestly, it was, it was a dead end. There was no, no, no movement, nothing to show that there had ever been a road there before. You know, it was overgrown by weeds and the pond and everything. So it was when we started constructing that road. And I said, okay, this was what he came to do. He was surveying. And that will show you that he came prepared. Today, that area. They, 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 because la most landlords, go and talk to them. They, they had given up, tenants living there. They didn't believe that because they packed out, they're back. And they, you know, you go there, you wouldn't believe that it is the same area. It's a very major, major road, plus the balloon that uh, passes through there.
today, no fewer than 99 roads are under construction, completed or about to be completed, cutting across the urban and rural areas and the three territorial zones in the state. Of these roads, 32 are fully completed and commissioned. The recovery of all the roads, all the bad roads, almost all the roads went bad, you know, where the municipal, some were destroyed purposely by the former government. He has brought them all, uh, almost all of them have been recovered. And he's doing that with beautiful drainage systems, meaning that if you see the quality of the roads, no one will last less than 40 years before asking for maintenance. That is my greatest happiness. The Vice President should please thank the Governor for making here conducive for all of us. And Your Excellency Senator Hope Uzodima, thank you for transforming this place. For us who have brought a business of 40 billion dollars here and leading how the road for people to pass except this, we are Have been a nightmare to all of us. But today, the government of people should have been that nightmare. Thousands of people believe that I want to say. So, yes, it is a very to help us join us in attacking the government of all of us. Who use this road? We thank His Excellency Senator Hopu Zodima for this wonderful road. At least we can boast of the Tiger Road by ShopRite. It's a very wonderful road that nothing can it's a strong company that came and do this particular road for us and the tunnel. And the tunnel is working wonderfully. Thank Senator Hope Uzodema for doing this wonderful work for us living around this place. I want to use the single opportunity to express the gratitude of the private sector in Lima State on what is happening about opening up roads within Uwere City and Lima State at large. Today we are practically commissioning a brand new dualized Shkumawaha road which had been surrendered to flood and other ecological processes before we came on board. We all know how residents had deserted this road before we embarked on its holistic rehabilitation and recovery. Both landlords and tenants had their tears of woes, yet their cries did not reach the ears of previous administrations. The ongoing construction of the Owere Olo and Owere Okewe dual carriageways is another ambitious and signature project of the Prosperity Administration, which to all intent and purposes will serve as a great stimulant to the economy of the state. See, these are giant strides that takes the efforts of a governor that is focused, a governor that loves his people, a governor that is thinking of the comfort of his people, the welfare and well-being of his people. Other to this is the remodeling of major roundabouts in the state capital in line with international best practices, which has ultimately addressed the hitherto perennial traffic gridlock in the city to the admiration of even the opponents of the government.
our governor is humanitarian. He loves the people and he wants to work and he has started working. And he wants the safety of the people and has provided us a workway. Why shouldn't we use it? I'm an engineer. Uh, my specialty is on road. I've gone around, I've looked at some of the projects going on. I'm, a little, I'm impressed. The roundabouts have changed some formation from what it used to be to now. And that's a traffic movement uh, ongoing roundabout, which is good. <laughs> To many, Governor Ozarima has demonstrated unparalleled commitment to governance. In just two years, he has presented his scorecard six times to Imo people in well attended stakeholders' meeting, a feat many say has beaten previous administrations. This is in addition to his regular interface with emo journalists and other critical sectors, thereby demystifying and taking government back to the people. This is the moment I've been waiting for. For the past time, I've been channel of the emo state. I've been longer to for West to meet with this emo journalist in this state. And today, Your Excellency, you have fulfilled that for us. As the government and the people look forward to another eventful year, opinions abound that with the right support and cooperation by the people, Senator Hope or the Deka Ozarima will surely achieve more for our state and the people. Uh, I'm pretty much impressed because Initially, we thought, uh, I didn't know that uh, uh, I would be able to make it home and move around peacefully. Um, because it's not the impression I had before coming back home. And I've seen myself some, some projects going on, some developments going on, which is, a little bit con which is con commendable. He has never rested. He was sworn in and two months the COVID came in. And again, when we think we're going out of the COVID, comes in the problem that has been existing in Imo State. But I want to commend him on his good ideas on recovery. The three R government, I see it as something that is going to help Imo State. So for me, he has tried to calm down the nerves of the crisis and conflicts in Imo State. I say kudos to him. His Excellency has come to work. He means well for his people. And he's using every contact and reach he has, you know, to place this state on the path of sustainable development, building systems and institutions that will outlive yeah. human beings. He's also doing his best to see how enabling environment can be provided for the private sector to thrive, thrive well, and drive the economy. So my charge to them, the people to support this government, to support the gov the, this government of Senator Hope Let them, let's give him a chance to perform. I didn't know him before, but let me say the truth. I didn't know him. I just entered an interview. He, he called me and employed me. It doesn't, things doesn't happen like that in Nigeria. So that one, I give him, I give him kudos for looking for merit. So somebody, if somebody can do that, that means he has good, you know, intention for this state. My advice to him is that he should remain focused and should avoid listening to destructive tendencies. More people should come and support the government because the government means well and the government is delivering the dividends of democracy and they can see it clearly. I thank Imo people for the support they have given already. You know, it, it's all we need now to do is to increase the support. And those who are not on board yet, to all join hands with this governor who has come 
with sincerity to serve the people. So all should join hands and then as we do that, the people of Imo are able to optimize this period of governance. To God be the glory.